Turn in your Bibles to Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17. Matthew 17. We are studying the people of the apocalypse as found in this book, which you can get as an ebook at prewrath.com, or you can buy the paperback as you see it here. Matthew chapter 17 begins to show us what is the next event on God's program now that he has placed his people in the land. They've become a nation and they are in control of their holy city, Jerusalem. The next event on his program is the restoration of the rest of the Old Covenant. The Old Covenant events that the first 69 weeks were brought to pass under those events with the Jews in the land. They were practicing their worship to God at the temple. And so there's a number of things that we covered in the last message that will have to occur. And at this point in time, it appears that the next event on God's program is the coming of Elijah. God will send an Elijah-like prophet before he returns the second time. He did that the first time. He sent John the Baptist, who was the first Elijah-like prophet. Now that's covered here in Matthew chapter 17. Let's read it, beginning in verse 10. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elijah must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elijah truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elijah is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Here Jesus shows us that Elijah had come already, John the Baptist, the first Elijah-like prophet, and they took his head off. That's exactly how the Jews treated this prophet named John the Baptist in Jesus' day. He was the second Elijah, the first, of course, in 1 Kings chapter 17, the one who pointed his finger at Ahab, the very real first Elijah who was translated into heaven. Then came John the Baptist, who's spoken of here. However, there is another here. When Jesus answers there in verse 11, he tells them, Elijah truly shall first come and restore all things. If you look at Malachi chapter 4, the last verses of the Old Testament, that prophecy that Jesus now refers to is written. Beginning in verse 5, Malachi chapter 4, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So Jesus here, speaking of this event that's recorded in the last verses of the Old Testament, is telling the apostles, the disciples here, that truly Elijah shall first come and restore all things. So that's who we're talking about. This prophet that will come prior to the day of the Lord, prior to the coming of Jesus, because the day of the Lord begins the same day that Jesus returns to rapture the saints. That's taught in Luke chapter 17. The same day rescue is the same day retribution from God comes upon the earth as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Lot. In both of those situations where God brought cataclysmic judgment upon the earth, he rescued his own first and then brought judgment on those who rejected him, those who remained. So who is it? It's Elijah, the prophet. There'll be another Elijah-like prophet sent to the Jews into the land before the great and dreadful Lord. When will that happen? Malachi tells us it'll be before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Before the time Jesus returns. Look at Acts chapter 3. There's, there's also some information here that helps pinpoint when this prophet will come. Beginning in verse 20. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, 
whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution. That word restitution can be translated and more accurately translated the times of restoration of all things, which Jesus spoke of there in Matthew 17, 11, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. There will be a restitution of all old covenant things And that's also recorded, look at Daniel chapter 11. Back in the book of Daniel, if we look at Daniel 11, beginning in verse 28, Then shall he return unto his land with great riches, talking about the Antichrist, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant. This this holy covenant here is the very covenant that's spoken of in the book of Exodus that covenant that was established for the children of Israel. He, his heart shall be against the Holy Covenant, the Antichrist, even though in prior days it was for the Holy Covenant, and he was in the mode of deception. Now his heart turns against the Holy Covenant, and he shall do ex- exploits and return to his own land. At the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. So this is the third time that he comes south from, as he is here called, the king of the north. So the holy covenant will be restored. there, And they will, the Jews will embrace it, and it will be exactly like it was in the days of the first 69 weeks of Daniel, during those last seven years, which are called the 70th week of Daniel. Here we're at the midpoint, and the Antichrist turns his heart against the Holy Covenant, which has been restored. That is what Elijah the prophet, this third Elijah, if you will, this but actually the second Elijah-like prophet, will come prior to the second coming of Christ. He will go to the land, he'll be sent to the people, and will take part in the restoration of the old covenant practices, the sacrifices. Well, of course, first you've got to build the third temple. All of the, these events must take place before the great and dreadful day of the Lord, before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, when he removes his people, when he rescues them from the persecution of the Antichrist, the great tribulation, Elijah the prophet will come prior to that in order to restore all things spoken of here in Matthew 17, 11 by the Lord Jesus. That's what we're looking for. Even today, even today, we are looking for God to send a mighty Hebrew prophet. And look, he's not in a hurry. He's taking his time as he has already taken over 60 years since Israel's been in the land, established as a nation. Then later in 1967, they became, uh, they, they controlled Jerusalem. All of these uh, events will come to pass because God has prophesied them. They are in this book at prewrath.com. The details, what I'm giving you is just a brief overview. God is going to send this Elijah-like prophet to restore all things according to the words of Jesus himself.